this is Annie Lafrenière, and welcome to the North Shore Community Association's podcast of October 4, 2023. Today, Callan gives us a walkthrough of the updates on the COVID situation in Quebec as of fall 2023. Then we will cover community events and services in the Côte Nord. Hello, everybody. My name is Callan Forrester, and usually I come on this podcast and I interview somebody about something going on in the region. But today I'm here to be a little bit of an information resource regarding COVID-19. Now, it's no surprise that COVID is surging once again in Quebec. With the summer months behind us and the cold months ahead, it's not uncommon that COVID surges along with cold and flu season. This is something we've seen across the past couple of years. So I just want to come on here and talk a little bit about preventative measures that you could take to make sure that you stay as safe and healthy as possible this coming winter and the people in your life can stay as safe and healthy this coming winter as well. The information I'm going to provide today are coming from four different resources. One is a CTV interview with Dr. Donald Vinn, who's an infectious disease specialist at the McGill University Health Center. One is a CBC article, one is uh, the CDC's COVID-19 page, and one is the Quebec government's COVID-19 page. Now to start, just to give a little bit of context, in Quebec in the first week of September, 127,000 cases of COVID were confirmed, But at this time, there were also over half a million people who self-reported having respiratory symptoms, but who weren't tested for COVID-19. Dr. Vin estimates that right now there is about 18 to 29,000 new cases of COVID daily in Quebec. This is just an estimate. There's no way to be 100% sure, but these are the numbers that we're working with right now. There's also been a doubling in the number of hospitalizations that we're seeing with COVID-related illnesses. With that being said, since the beginning of the pandemic, there has been a significant change in how sick people are getting with COVID. It seems like this new variant, once again, is not going to make you as sick as we are hearing about in those early days. However, it is still something that is making people quite ill and it can be debilitating, at least for the first few days. One of the reasons why COVID is surging again is because we're seeing a new variant. This variant is called the EG.5.1 variant. And as of right now, it's currently about 45% of detected cases in Quebec. The reason this variant is spreading so quickly is because though it is a subsection of Omicron and they are related, it is not exactly the same, which means that a lot of vaccines that people have already had don't necessarily prevent from this. It also means that if you've had COVID recently, you may not be immune to this exact variant because it is made up of different things. Now, the good news is that on September 12th, Health Canada approved uh, a new COVID vaccine that covers XBB.1.5, which is the previous new variant that we were hearing about quite recently. And that one is quite closely linked to EG.5.1, which means that though they may not be exactly the same, they have the same lineage and this updated vaccine might be effective against it. Not only will it be effective against EG.5, but it's also possible that some other related variants will be covered under this new vaccine. The government of Quebec will be launching their vaccine campaign starting soon. On October 10th, they will be launching the vaccine campaign for COVID-19 this fall. And the National Advisory Committee on Immunizations recommends that people who have not had COVID-19 or had a vaccine dose in the last six months take the time to get this vaccine this year. The campaign will prioritize people in the vulnerable sector, as it often does, and Health Minister Christian Dubé says that the timing of this campaign is to be strategic to make sure that people feel the most protected between the times where uh, viruses like this are most prevalent, which is the months of December to March. Now, in terms of masking, Dr. Vin explains that ideally, if you are symptomatic, you should stay home. Even if you are no longer symptomatic and you feel as though you've recovered, it's important to wear a mask for at least five more days when you are out in public. He also recommends that if you're going to be in a setting where there will be people who are sick, such as a hospital or some sort of healthcare environment, he recommends that putting a mask on is probably a good idea. Now, he also points out that there are sick people everywhere, not just in hospitals. And if you're going out in public, it is a safe idea to wear a mask, especially because we are now relying on the honor system of if you're sick, please stay home. And that isn't a 100% foolproof method. If you do come down with respiratory symptoms and you feel as though you may have COVID-19, 
it is important to test and make sure that you are taking the precautions to stop the spread as much as possible. Now, in terms of rapid testing, there are a couple places across Quebec where you can access them. One of the easiest places would be the pharmacies. Tests in pharmacies are reserved for certain demographics of people. Those are people who are considered for treatment of COVID-19 with, for example, Paxlovid. They're also reserved for people aged 14 to 17, full-time students aged 18 to 25, and according to the website, people who receive free medication under the public drug plan, recipients of last resort financial assistance, and people aged 65 and over with low income. If you do not fall into one of those categories, they are also available in schools. Preschools, elementary, and high school students will be provided with tests so that they can um, test at home and have their family test if they are ever become symptomatic. They are also available in educational child care services, in adult education centers, and vocational training centers. Some companies also provide for their employees, so it might be a good idea to ask your employers if that's something that they can provide. And if all of those fail, there are also local points of service where you can make appointments to get a rapid test. Um, you can do that through Click Santé. And to get there, you can go on the Quebec website and search Quebec government rapid testing, and it'll direct you to where you need to go. One thing to note about rapid tests is that though they are an incredible resource, they aren't 100% reliable. If your test is positive, you have COVID. It's very, very rare for a rapid antigen test to give a false positive. So if you test positive, that means you unfortunately do have COVID. Now, if you test negative, it's a little bit more complicated. Depending on the variant that you have, it may or may not show up on your antigen test. So it's important that you take the proper precautions to make sure that you're not getting other people sick. If you have symptoms, it's possible that you still have COVID. It's possible that you have the flu or a cold or anything like that. But it is recommended that you take precautions to make sure that you keep the people in your life safe, um, like wearing a mask, not going out into public if you can avoid it, and just generally isolating. If you test negative, it's recommended by the CDC that you wait for 48 hours, test again. If it's still negative, wait another 48 hours and test again. Third time's the charm. If you test negative three times, it's likely that you don't have COVID. However, it is possible that you do still have it. As I said, these antigen tests are not always 100% reliable. So to summarize, what does all this mean? It means a lot of the same that we've heard over the past few years. If you're sick, make sure to wear a mask, make sure that you're testing, and make sure that you're testing consistently to make sure that you're not getting a false negative. If you haven't had a vaccine in the past six months, it's a pretty good idea to look into if you're eligible so that you can make sure you are the most protected you can possibly be. Cases are surging across the province, and if you're already getting a flu shot anyways, it might be a good idea to update your COVID vaccines as well. I hope you found this information useful. I hope that you stay safe and healthy and are able to protect those around you this year. And good luck. Did you know about one in five Canadians experience a mental illness each year? And more than half of struggling Canadians are not getting the mental health support they need. In other words, more than 20% of Canadians in any given year will experience mental health concerns, and only a third of those people will seek help or treatment. October 1st to 7th marks Mental Health Awareness Week. It's held annually, and it aims to enhance awareness of mental illnesses, reduce related stigmas, and illuminate the real lived experiences of those affected. This year's theme is Awareness, Access, and Parity for Mental Health and Substance Use Care in Canada. Did you know Bay Camo has a 50 plus wellness group for the English speaking community? The NSCA's mission is to help our seniors stay informed, active, socially connected and healthy. If you or someone you know like social games, crafts, going on excursions, participating in informative sessions on things like health, finances and more, please contact Natalie at the NSCA in Bay Como. Join Amber in Louis-Ange saint Public Library in Sept-Île on Saturday, October 14th at 10 a.m. for a fall-themed story time. We will take a quick walk around the library if the weather is good, so please dress accordingly. There will be stories, autumn treasures, and fun. Contact the library to register. On Sunday, October 15th at 10 a.m., join Amber in Paul Cartier's Public Library, Le Manuscrit, for a Halloween story time. Come dressed up with your best, or worst, costume. There will be stories and music and pumpkins. Contact the library to register. We 
would like to thank our sponsor for this podcast, the Secretariat aux Relations avec les Québécois d'Expression Anglaise.